Navisworks allows us to control our environment, and those environment variables are found underneath the Environment tab. In the Autodesk Rendering dialog box, which can be found either underneath View, Windows, and Autodesk Rendering, or by finding the Autodesk Rendering tab along one of the sides, underneath the tab called Environments, we can find those variable settings. The first variable setting is for the sun. And we can see the sun in our scene over here toward the right hand side. Obviously, it's the big glowing ball up in the sky. And the first thing that you can change about the sun is the intensity of the sun, as well as the color of the sun. Personally, I like to leave the intensity and color of the sun the way that it is, particularly the intensity, because that controls the brightness of the sun. And we really don't need the sun to be any brighter than it is, because the sun's brightness and it's set at 1, is what the sun's brightness actually would be. Now from time to time though, we might need to change the color of the sun. Maybe we have the sun setting in the sky, and we want to have an orange or a red or some sort of yellow color being cast from that sun. If that's the case, you can either change it by typing in the appropriate number here, or over toward the right hand side, there's a button. If you click on that button, you get a list of the basic colors. We could choose one of the colors off of this list, or we could define a custom color by clicking on Define Custom Colors, and then picking an appropriate color off of the list, such as if we picked a yellow color, and then maybe slid this bar up so it would become a lighter yellow color. If we click on OK to that, now the sun is more of a yellow tinge, and it's actually casting a yellow tinge of light into the stadium. Now another setting that we can change is once again underneath the Autodesk rendering. Here we have the sun disk appearance. I usually don't change this information either. I usually leave this as being a 4, a 1, or a 1. And the reason is, is that the disk scale is the overall size of the sun. And we really don't need the sun to be bigger in the sky. The second option is the glow intensity, which is the glow that you see around the sun. The third is the disk intensity, which really can make the sun look like a big glowing ball of fire in the sky. Not actually fire, but just a big glowing ball. And that doesn't really help us much for our rendering, so I usually leave it at one as well. But the settings that I do change often are the sun angle calculator settings, which include either relative lighting or geographical. Relative means that you can slide this bar from side to side to move the sun through the sky. And here we can see that as I spin the sun around the sky, we get different kinds of shades on the interior of our stadium. But by just changing the azimuth, we're not actually changing what the height of the sun is, just its location in the sky. The other thing that we could do is change the altitude, which would either raise the sun up in the sky or lower the sun down in the sky. And if we would lower the sun in the sky, we can start to see that it looks like the sun is setting and we get a nighttime scene. If we raise it up in the sky, we'll get more light into our stadium and get different shadow effects. There's also option for geographical. And this is really the one that I tend to use the most. And this is for placing a date, so which day of the year, which time. This is set at 10 a.m., which is why the sun is so low in the sky. If we change this to be 12, Notice how much higher in the sky the sun is now? We can even change the location that the sun is in the world by selecting next to location, settings. From here, we can type in the latitude and longitude of our site. We can even say which direction north is in relationship to our building, in this case, our stadium. So if we wanted north to be in a different direction, we could slide this a certain degree angle over or type it in over here to the right-hand side. But I do like the way that it's set up currently, so I'll just move this back over to zero and then click on OK. But if we did change the latitude or longitude, then the sun would then move to a different part of the sky, which is appropriate. And I've just clicked on OK and went to the Autodesk rendering for that geographical location on that day of the year, that time. Another setting that's available to us is sky. Underneath sky, we can change the intensity factor of the sky. We can change the haze. I usually leave the intensity factor the way that it is, but sometimes if you want to get an interesting glow, maybe a sunset look, I've been known to change the haze. Night color, 
I've never had a time where I needed to change the night color. But if you do want to change it, so maybe it's a gray or some slightly different color, you could change it here by changing the numbers or come over to this box over to the side, pick another color off of the list, click on OK, then the nighttime sky will be the color of whatever you picked. I'll just click on cancel to that because I do like the black sky in nighttime. You can also have the horizon height. This is essentially where the horizon or where the ground will be in relationship to your building model in the distance. So that can be adjusted. There's also, do you want to blur the sky? As well as, what color should the ground render at? Now this is the ground that's outside of your model environment. The reason why this is a green color where the field is at is because the field is part of our model. But once you get way outside of your model, where the ground meets the horizon, your model normally won't reach out that far. And this is where you can set the ground color for where the ground reaches the horizon line. Finally, I almost never make any changes to the exposure. I like the way that it is. But the exposure will allow you to create different effects. So if you want to have more intense shadows, more white, adjust the highlights or midtones of your scene, you can do that. Also, I like to have the exposure on. So make sure there's a check mark there with on. Because if you turn the exposure off, and I'll just click exposure up here at the top of the dialog box, you see what happens when the exposure is turned off. You tend to get a very blinding white or bland scene. But by turning your exposure back on again, you can then get a scene that has much better lighting conditions. So remember that you can affect the way that the sky looks, the overall exposure of your image, as well as brightness, the intensity of the sun, and the location of the sun in the sky all through the Environments tab underneath Autodesk Rendering.